did you do I mean seriously oh, oh, oh. Jesus Christ oh, oh. Yuzuami Yumitsu What was this? This anime? Holy fuck. This. Let's just get let's just get this done. Okay, let me let me let me, let me just do the headline, okay? A kite. Um 1998 anime that has been created by Yuzuwami Umitsu. After her parents' brutal murder, Sawa is orphaned. Now under the control of her detective guardians, Sawa becomes an assassin who targets ranged. Oh shit! What was this? I mean, seriously. What was this? What was this anime? Okay, now look, if people don't know, hold on, let, 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 me, let me put this back, let me put this back. There we go, there we go. Let me calm down. But people don't know. Yazawami Yumitsu, he was the same person who did the Mezzo Forte films, the OVAs. And I was mind blown by those two. By the action, by the dialogue, even the uncut version. I'll post them both in the description box. And I did not think um, Yazawami would go even further when it comes to the drive. Now, I think this came before Mezzo Forte, so forgive me for the lack of knowledge because I'm still trying to recollect myself. But goddamn, I was wrong. A kite. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you guys liked Mezzo Forte and his wackiness, his action. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's action. If you like, if you, if you, oh, I can't even think. All I'm going to say is this. You would not be sorry watching the kite. It is fucking crazy. Is the anime full of action? You're not gonna be disappointed. This anime starts off pretty quickly, letting you know the primal knowledge of what you're gonna get, you, what you're gonna get yourself into. I mean, soon as an anime starts, some guy gets his head blown off by trying to molest a child. And that's just the beginning. That's only five minutes into this goddamn anime. And not only that I was mind blown, but it made me get back into those old anime genres when I was a kid, just being in the hinges and just me being aware of what I was getting myself into. This is like a roller coaster. A kind is like a roller coaster that does not give you a slow pacing gesture of what you're getting yourself into right when you buckle in the ride. Soon as you jump your ass in that fucking seat, you better strap on because that shit is going to go oh, very hard up the hills, down the hills without any slow time pacing at all. The character development is just as good as the action. I love Sawa and Obari's drive and just their dialogue alone. There were times when they would have downtime and just talk it out and just try to see what their purpose in life is when it comes to them just being regular contract killers. And when they talk, their conversations is actually pretty normal and practically so normal in a way you would actually forget that they're assassins. I like their dialogue especially when it comes to Sawa. Sawa is a very, very kind-hearted woman. I love the fact that she was more than just about killing and fulfilling her legacy. But at the same time, she would actually would try to understand people, their motivation. She cared about people. But all that aside, though, she knows how to hold her composure, and she actually knows how to blend into the environment. She knows when to shut on and, and off her emotions. Because when things get serious, 
she is just as sharp as the as she is brilliant and witty and charming and heartwarming. She is cold blooded. She is very, very carefree. And at the same time, she will stop at nothing when it comes to doing and fulfilling and succeeding her assassinations. I love Sawa. In fact, her character was completely done in perfection. Same thing with Obari. Obari was great. He was a well-warranted character. I wish I would have known more about his character because he was more than just a character that was willing to do assassinations and care about Sawa. But he was actually trying to get her out of bond mode when it comes to her being in the brink of darkness because Sawa has lost her family. Her family has gotten brutally murdered. And I like the way how they shown how she ended up getting into these modes of just inflicting into the past when she thinks very deeply of to what gotten her into her being an assassin in the first place by finding the people that's responsible of the murder of her family. They've done this well by blending into the soundtrack of this anime by mixing some funk and old style gestures of jazz into it. I thought the soundtrack of this anime was amazing. The soundtrack matches the dialogue. There were times where Saw would just have these deep emotions and these deep past thoughts of how she was when she was a child, when she lost her parents, and how she is now when it comes to her obtaining her assassination abilities. And it would just play jazz music. And what I liked about this anime a lot is that it would not explain things. It would not tell you things. It would show you images. And it would show you certain brief scenes of what happened to her as a child. So you have to put things together. And man, it played well with the jazz music, especially the action. The action, I gotta go back to the action again because I was so traumatized. Now since I am, now since I have collected myself, I have enough sense for me to explain this in a more mature way. The action is brutal. In fact, creatively brutal to the point where I was very, very shocked of just how much gore there was in this anime. I mean, you're not talking just, a, you, you're, this is not just an anime where people just get shot and get killed by explosions and just regular gunplay. But this anime is actually pretty creative when it comes to the execution of how these people end up getting killed off. I mean, Sawa has a gun. She has a gun and she uses this gun to do executions, of course. But this gun is actually customized for her to inflict permanent damage to enemies just in case if they are still breathing i mean for fuck's sake these gut this gun that she has it has mercury ignition bullets that if you shoot an enemy she can just flick a switch in this bullet in this gun and then the bullets will ignite causing their bodies to rupture and explode i mean for fuck's sake she pulls off headshots and shoot people in areas that you don't even think that they would even try to get up but she presses that button just so she can flex a little bit, just so she can let people know how deadly she is. I was getting Fist of the North Star vibes the way how these people was getting blown up, but in a more artistic and at the same time in a visual tone, because unlike Fist of the North Star, they actually show you how these guys blow up. I'm talking about the older Fist of the North Star version, of course. Use Ami Amitsu's over-the-top action is here once again. Now, I remember on my last review of Mezzo Forte, how I was saying his over-the-top anime action was very too fictionized when it comes to people punching holes into walls, getting stabbed in a forks right through the freaking tables, people crushing baseballs with their bare hands. They have that here, but it's actually even more fucking crazy. If people don't know a kite, you would know this scene, especially if you go through social media a lot. The anime is so wacky. This anime is so crazy when it comes to this over-the-top action to the point where you won't just say, wow. You'll just scratch your head of, of how much the shit lacks sense. I mean, for Christ's sake, Sawa falls off a cliff and this dude throws her off the cliff as he's holding her while they're falling. My first question was why he didn't just push her instead of just holding on to her. <laughs> anyway, as they're falling, she grabs on to one of the freaking billboard signs and that begins to fall and collapse. Now, I kind of believe that part. I was like, okay, maybe it's been there for so long to the point where um, they forgot or maybe they thought it was stable enough. So, so many years, it probably was beginning to wear and tear down. That part I was trying to, I, I was beginning to understand. But then the anime actually, the anime actually made me 
be even more more confused as it was falling as it was falling she gets on top of the guy just so she can absorb the so he can absorb most of the impact they fall through a freaking walkway break through a wall the guy's already dead at this point falls to a car the car falls right through the freaking walkway hits a truck in the streets in the truck and the car and the guy on top of the car and Sawa, all of them fall right through the freaking ground and they end up down in the freaking subway. But Sawa, she actually begins to freaking jump off of that shit. And then remember the billboard? The billboard falls right down below and it, it blows up. <laughs> what the fuck? I was thinking to myself, as much as they kept going below and below and below, I thought they was gonna go in the underworld. I thought it was going to go to hell at this point. <laughs> I mean, why not? I mean, at this point, this anime was was crazy when it comes to the, to the delivery with that. And I think that Yuzawami wanted to like break the fourth wall, but god damn, dude. If you're going to break the fourth wall, make some sense with it. This, it's, it's not even supernatural. This anime is basically a revenge story. Now, honestly, this anime has done great with flying colors when it comes to you being satisfied with the over-the-top action, the wacky chemistry when it comes to you getting pulled in by the executions. But it is lacking the drive of the characterization, which is Sawa and Obari. We know their criminology. We know what they stand for. But I want to know more about Sawa's death of her, of, of her parents. And at the same time, what put her to the motivation of why they ended up being killed. Was it in a mob that they owe somebody and they couldn't pay them back? Did their family get involved in something that they can't wipe their hands clean about? We would never know. Same thing with Obari's character. We started off watching this anime, knowing the drop of what got them into being in the futuristics of them completing their mission. But I wanna know what got them into this point in the first place enough for me to care about these characters because I'll be frank with you right now. Things happen on this anime that I was supposed to care, especially the ending. The ending put me into the point where I was supposed to feel like something deep with these characters, but I couldn't because it wasn't, it was it, it didn't earn it. I did not know enough about Sawa and Obari. And besides, I felt like with Sawa's character, we, we know, especially people who watch the anime, as things was, was beginning to make sense, she does more that confused me. As in trying to find her, um, you know, the, the people who killed her family, they kind of pulled a 180. And at, as they pull that 180 by us having our questions answered, she does things that makes me even more confused of her character. Like, okay. If this happened, why is you doing this? Why is you? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard for me to explain without spoiling it. But overall, scratch those aside. This anime was great. Mind blowing. And overall, they have another one. Yeah. Desawami has made another one. Kite the Liberator. I think this is a sequel or maybe this is another story. But we'll see. So stay tuned for my review on this. I'm going to be checking this out pretty soon. I'm going to have to give a kite a C. <sighs> as much as this anime traumatized me, I did not think after watching Mezzo Forte and watching Blood Rain, Cursed of Yoma, I did not think that Oh, I thought I've seen it all. I, I thought I have witnessed the traumatic effects of just what old anime stood for when it comes to them not holding back their potential and just showing off things that even adults would quench and move back and just be traumatically influenced of what they're looking at in the screen. But I was wrong. And it makes me nervous of what else is in my anime collection that has this type of potential that a kite has i don't know if i'm ready for that energy i don't know if i'm ready to find out honestly but if you want to know stay tuned for more of my anime reviews and upcoming videos hit it your way
that's all I have to say for today. This is your girl, your critic teacher, and you guys have a good day.